So you've been assigned a digital visual project and you're not a graphic designer. Well, at Design Lab, we're going to help you make your design look like crap. And no, it's not what it sounds like. At Design Lab, we follow Robin Patricia Williams's Principles of Design from the Non-Designer's Design Book. In this video, we'll walk you through the main ideas so that no matter what kind of visual media you're designing, it'll look great every time. At Design Lab, we use two sets of principles to guide our design, cat and crap. Let's start with cat. And no, not that kind of cat. C-A-T stands for conceptual, aesthetic, and technical. These are the three overarching principles that should guide your design choices. We'll start with conceptual because without a concept, you don't have a project. Your concept is your main idea or argument. No matter what kind of project you're working on, the most important thing is that you use your visuals to articulate your ideas clearly and effectively. To do that, you need to understand who your audience is and don't just say your professor. You need to know who your ideal audience is and what kinds of visuals or messages they can respond to so you can make your design persuasive, informative, and entertaining. For example, your design will be different if it's meant for a group of elementary school students versus a group of college students. As part of your concept, you need to think about genre. How does your chosen or assigned visual medium affect how you'll present your ideas? For example, an infographic made for a website will be presented very differently from data visualized on PowerPoint slides, even if the numbers are exactly the same. Aesthetics is the next principle. Aesthetics is a measure of visual and or auditory quality. How you conceptualize your project will affect your aesthetics. Different forms of media have different aesthetics to take into consideration. For example, a video has different aesthetic principles than a PowerPoint slideshow. The largest consideration for aesthetics, however, is whether or not your project is using the principles of good design. We'll learn more about the principles of good design in the next section of this video. Finally, there are the technical principles of design. This includes using the right software for the job, but it also includes more abstract considerations. Is your work free of typos and errors? Have you used high-quality images? Thinking critically about technical considerations will make your work appear more polished and professional. For a digital image, you'll likely use software like PowerPoint, Keynote, Google Slides, or Canva, or you might even use Photoshop, Illustrator, or InDesign. It's important to use software that you know, or to learn the software well enough that you can use it to establish an easy workflow so you can spend less time focusing on troubleshooting and spend more time on the content. Our friends at Software Training for Students can help you learn the best tools for these programs. They also offer free workshops on PowerPoint and Keynote, as well as free one-on-one -on -one appointments to get help with the technical issues that you might encounter. Now that you know what CAT stands for, let's take a closer look at the A, or Aesthetics. In Design Lab, we teach you to design crap. That is, we teach four principles that you should keep in mind whenever you're working on a digital media project. Those principles are contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity, or C-R-A-P. That spells design. C is for contrast. Contrast can be achieved through variations in size, color, line thickness, and spacing. Designers rely on contrast to create a hierarchy of information to let the audience know what's most important. Right now, these four pieces of information are not differentiated from each other. But after we make some small adjustments, the information has a clear hierarchy. This leads the eye to prioritize the large pink information over the smaller black information. Contrast is also a function of legibility. Notice how the lack of contrast in color between the background and font makes the text difficult to read. Just by changing the background color, we can make the information much easier to understand. R is for repetition. It may be tempting to throw many different colors and shapes into your design, but this can be overwhelming for your audience. Instead of trying to include too many objects of varying shapes and colors, we can use repetition of our main design element, the pink hexagon, to create a cohesive design package. This works the same with fonts. Another place where repetition is important is in the selection of images. 
Let's look at this example. These three icons of food are disparate in that they all have different styles, but we can create unity of the images through repetition in bounding, shape, and caption. Better yet, you could use a similar style for all three images, making the design feel more cohesive. A is for alignment. Our brains want everything to be organized, and they struggle when things are not in alignment. Compare these lines, which are all over the place, to these lines, which are intentionally placed in alignment with one another. Let's look at this slide. There's something off about the alignment here. Can you spot it? The text is slightly off-center. By moving the text to the middle, the slide looks more polished and aesthetically pleasing. Finally, P is for proximity, which deals with the distance between elements in our design. Through proximity, we can create visual relationships that lead to an easier understanding of materials. Things that are close to each other will automatically feel more related. Proximity can also remedy some confusion. For example, when captioning images, it's important to keep the text in close proximity to said image. Even though the connections may seem obvious to you, being intentional with captions makes sure that the audience can easily follow the information that you're presenting to them. You never want to give your audience an opportunity to misunderstand you. All right, let's recap. In this video, we looked at the C-A-T of effective design. That is, the conceptual, aesthetic, and technical elements of a digital visual design. We also looked at design crap. Contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. These aesthetic principles should be taken into consideration when creating a digital design. Please feel free to visit our resources page on the Design Lab website for links to online stock images, fonts, and other content, as well as links to software help. Design Lab is here to help you work effectively in digital media. We offer free one-on-one -on -one or small group appointments to provide personalized recommendations and feedback on your projects. We can help you at any point in the creation process. We can help you brainstorm ideas and think through the organization. We can recommend tools, resources, and equipment. And we can be a second set of eyes throughout the creation and editing process. Due to the pandemic, we have suspended all in-person appointments, but we are now offering appointments via video calls. To make an appointment, just go to the Design Lab website and click the pink Make an Appointment button. Have just a quick question or want to drop in and see if someone's available now? Start a chat with us using our new chat service, which is open anytime Design Lab is open. Click Chat with Design Lab in the main menu of the Design Lab website. We look forward to working with you.